Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Drawing with Michael. Um, we're continuing on our quest to really change things up on the channel. Yesterday I did a review of the Dell um, laptop, the Inspirion 7573 that I had purchased. Did a little character drawing in Sketchbook Pro. Today I'm going to continue on with the digital um, you know, the digital theme, and I'm going to go ahead, I've got a myriad of devices that I utilize in my day-to-day -day illustration work. Um, you know, from my iMac desktop to, gosh, I've got a couple iPads, I've got my Inspirion, I've got an HBZ book, I've got a Surface Book 2, and all of these pieces and all the, my pieces, all these products I, I actually use. I don't stick them in the corner and just take them out whenever I want to do a review. Um, you know, I use them in their different capacities, and, and depending on the situation, um, you know, each one has its value. So, today I'm going to be working on the Surface Book. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that have Surface devices, and, and Microsoft markets the Surface as an artistic device. You know, a while back they also had a, a, a desktop that, that looked like it was going to be a competitor for the possible iMac generation, but... Unfortunately, whenever you inject the Intrig technology into that equation, it really kind of limits um, limits the possibilities uh, of uh, you know that artistic interface because Intrig, unfortunately, has a couple flaws to it. But that being said, I've always been a really firm believer in the Surface products. I've owned Surface. Uh, you know, my first device was a Surface Two. and I segued and I got a Surface Three, and then I got a Surface Book. And until most recent, I was going to go ahead and get a Surface Book 2. Um, you know, you ask me, why would you purchase something with technology that is flawed and you don't like? Because the flaw happens whenever you do one particular gesture and action at a particular speed. You know, drawing slowly. And I don't, I don't typically draw slowly, <laughs> so I don't really have an issue with it. Um, you know, Intrig has improved. I believe they're with over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity now with their new Pro Pen, which I do have on my Surface Book. And the Surface Book, the original generation, does support it. The one I have is not the i7 with the dedicated GPU. So even though it doesn't have that, it's very snappy. It's a great device, and I think that it does have value. And you can pick one of these up for about $450 to $500. It's the lowest end model, the 256 with a 13.3 inch screen and it's got the i5 uh, processor so they do option them up all the way to the 15 five, 6 inch screen I believe but it's not HD so this has the same screen resolution as the 15 6 does and the you know, funny thing is it's a bigger screen but it's got the same resolution as the smaller one so technically the smaller one should look better right uh, and then, in terms of build quality, there is nothing. And I don't even think the MacBook does. And people are, that own MacBooks are going to go, How dare you? How dare you put down my MacBook? How dare you? But the reality is, is the build quality of the Surface, in my opinion, is equal to, and in some capacity, out, it surpasses the MacBook. I, I've owned MacBooks before. And I've seen the current generation of the MacBook, um, and they've had their woes. And I think the most current uh, generation, the 16-inch, you know, it's kind of funny. M you know, Surface and all the other uh, companies around the world are like, 15.6 is the standard. And then Apple steps in and it's like, screw everyone. We're doing 16-inch. And now you get it for $3,000. And you're like, wait a minute, that's like the price of a, a, a decent used car. Um, and that's kind of the caveat to this whole conversation. You can get... A great PC with touch sensitivity and drawing capability with pressure, you know, the stylus and the pressure, uh, even at refurbished prices, you know, for $500 to $700 to $1,000. And, you know, I understand, here's the deal, I understand why Apple doesn't put touch sensitivity and uh, pin support into their laptops because it has to do with money. It has to do with the fact that they've got an entire line of products that supports pressure sensitivity, and it's called the iPad. Uh, and I get that, but, you know, Microsoft has been doing great things for the past five years, um, you know, since 2014, 2013, and they've developed their products now to be really streamlined. So we're going to do a little drawing today. Sorry for all the talking, but I just wanted to give you a, a, an overview. So mine is the i5 processor, 256 gigs of SSD storage with um, the 13.3 inch screen, 
and uh, no dedicated GPU. Uh, it does not have a dedicated GPU. Um, I did a, uh, a search of, you know, the comparison between the two, and unless you're doing something like video editing or rendering uh, in that capacity, the i5 will do illustrators just fine. You don't have to go out and get the i7. You know, I got the i7 for my HPZ book just because I knew that I was going to be doing video editing. There's bugs everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's bugs everywhere in my studio. <laughs> bugs, there's bugs everywhere. <laughs> The, the Chinese uh, lady beetles that invade my house uh, every single year on this time. They're just everywhere. Oh my gosh, I vacuum and then they come back. Anyway, that's what I'm dealing with right now. So what I'm trying to say is for illustrators, you know, launching these programs, being in Photoshop, you know, I was able to run Photoshop 20, uh, 20 on my SP3 as well as Illustrator, as well as ZBrush and, and, you know, those, even the older computers, you know, support. That's the thing. What's interesting in the past four or five years, the speed of the processors has not increased. What we've done is just add more processors to, to, to take the load, and we've sped the RAM up, uh, co you know, considerably. Um, this has, I believe, DDR4 uh, RAM in it, uh, maybe DDR3. Um, I have to check. I know my my Dell has DDR4, 2700 megahertz or something like that. Um, but that being said, we're going to do a little sketch in here in Sketchbook Pro. We're going to do a character, and hopefully you guys get an understanding of what is possible even on these older devices. This was purchased in 2018, early 2018, so it's just a little bit over a year old. And um, I've got a paper-like uh, cover screen protector on the screen, so whenever I draw on it, Excuse me, whenever I draw on it, it feels similar to paper. Is it paper? No. <laughs> I'll just give you a realization check here. Drawing on the computers is, is a disconnect. So that's something for those of you who are looking to get into digital illustration. It will be a disconnect for you, especially if you're coming from the, um, the traditional world. You know, there's no substitution for paper. I don't care who you are or what you've done. Uh, to your machine, there is no substitution for paper. It doesn't feel like watercolor. It doesn't feel like oil. It doesn't feel like graphite on paper. If you're a tactile person, just know that going to, into the digital illustration, there is a disconnect. So you need to realize that. However, Microsoft has put some things in play, which Apple has not. Apple and the Apple Pencil has the hard plastic nib that goes on a slick surface. It feels good. Don't get me wrong. Does it feel like paper? No. Does it feel like a pencil? No. I've got paper like on my iPad too. Then it creates a little bit of resistance. Um, you know what? I think that there should be somebody out there, or maybe there is, and if there is, please leave me a comment in the comment sections. Is there a different softness nib for the Apple Pencil, either generation one or two? If there is, I will buy it. If not, somebody please produce it, right? Microsoft includes nibs with the Pro Pen and you can change and they give designations that artists are familiar with. H, HB, B, 6B, 7B, 7H, 8H, whatever. I think they come with four or five nibs and you can swap out the nibs and they've got a little rubber tip on here so whenever you draw on the, on the glass surface it creates resistance and it feels so good. It feels so good. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Do a little character art and review again. I've already reviewed the fit and finish and the quality, not the speed, not drawing on the Surface Pro 2. I'm sorry, the Surface Book. There's so many Surface devices. I mean, honestly, one, two, three, Surface Book, and then they stop putting numbers to it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started and uh, enjoy the, the process. Okay, so here is the Surface Book 1. Um, i5 processor manufactured by the Microsoft Corporation. Um, what's great about this device is you can detach this portion of the computer. And I'll show you guys here really quick. It doesn't take long. You can do it when the computer is actually not powered up. So currently I've got it in its folded uh, configuration. So let's go ahead as people keep texting me and emailing me this morning. Um, so Basically, this is the way I utilize. So I've got my dongle in there for my XP Pen remote. You guys know I like this. This basically is a device I can program my quick keys in so I don't have to use my keyboard. Um, but for those of you who want the machine to be basically a laptop, so this is kind of the configuration that a lot of people will have it in, right? 
Everybody's talked about the hinge. The hinge is wonderful. It's a great piece of architectural design that I think needs an award in itself. They need to utilize this hinge in phones. They need to utilize it in a myriad of applications. I would like to see it possibly fold all the way back. That way I don't have to um, you know, disconnect the keyboard portion. Um, in the surface line, there, there's a little magnet that keeps it closed, which is really nice. It's not hard on any of the edges. It's got great, again, industrial design. It's clean. It's made of magnesium. So it's really nice in the hand. There is a little bit of a gap here, and people have talked about the gap. But really, it, it's ridiculous. Let's, let's get over the gap. Um, it's got a, a, an HD camera on the back, I believe 720. And on the front, whenever I open it up, it's got an HD camera on the front and it's got Windows Hello, which is really cool. Um, so in terms of how I utilize this device, the keyboard of course is really nice, you know, big deal. Then it's got the, the I think third or fourth generation um, uh, touchpad, which is really nice, it's really snappy. How I use this device primarily, if I go and I use it for school, I'll go and I'll use it as a laptop. So that's really cool. So whenever I do demos and stuff like that, it's got a little mini DV port right here that I plug stuff in. And if I need to plug it into an HDMI, so I just have a uh, DVI to HDMI conversion dongle. So it's got a little button right here, which is really cool. So I press down and hold the button. It releases the tablet portion. Um, this is a huge 12.9 inch uh, screen comparable to, I mean, here's the iPad 10.5. I could basically stick the 10.5 inside of here, and I do have a 12.9, I just don't have it handy. Um, and they're basically the same size. Uh, actually, this is 13.3, so this screen is larger than the current 12.9 uh, iPad. Um, so now I would take this, and, and the, really the kind of the bummer thing about this whole tablet, you know, tablet portion and then keyboard portion, you would think they would stick some kind of a Bluetooth connectivity in here. That way I could put the keyboard on the left-hand side and I could draw on it, which would be really nice. I'd also like to see a kickstand, some type of kickstand that pops out or something that I could attach. That way I could, I could sit there and draw on it, but unfortunately it doesn't have that. Um, you know, and then uh, the problem is, is once I detach this, this is completely detached. It has nothing to do with this now. These are two separate entities. They don't talk to each other. They don't communicate with each other. The only time they do that is whenever I go back and I stick it on its little perch here. Um, this has a battery in it, and in the later models, it actually houses the GPU if you have the i7 processor um, configuration, and it contains all your peripherals. So, you know, I understand the need to have something like this. If you're talking to somebody in a meeting or if you're presenting artwork or illustration, you would basically look at this and, and, and detach it and you'd say, oh, look at this artwork, look at this artwork, pass it around and it comes back and then you put it back on its perch. But what I do is I turn it around, I stick it back on its perch, it's magnetically connected with locks, it detects it, and then I fold it back, which is really cool. So now, boom, we'll start the surface really quick just to get you guys to see exactly the wonderful. Okay, so if you look at it, it looks a little dull. And the reason why it looks dull is because I do have a paper-like um, matte textured uh, surface to it. I did that because I noticed, um, especially on my iPads, whenever I go in and I draw, it's it was just too slick. And I understand the slickness, and I understand all of that. The, the, the problem is, is, as artists, we're very tactile people. We want to feel the texture of the paper. We want to feel the resistance of the stylus on the surface. No pun intended. Um, so you guys know that I love Sketchbook Pro. Uh, currently, I don't have uh, Photoshop loaded on this machine. It does run on this machine very well, uh, actually. And uh, the reason why I don't is because I've got it on three machines and they only allow you basically to have it on uh, two machines at once. So with that in mind, I just don't have it on this machine. I do have Fresco. Um, Fresco is supported by this particular machine, by the Surface Line. And it hasn't gone over to, um, to Windows in general yet, but I do uh, have it on this machine and I do have it on my iPads. So, um, in terms of palm rejection, we talked about palm rejection yesterday, and let's be realistic, the palm rejection on the machines suck. <laughs> uh, 
The surface is much worse for some reason than, uh, let's say, um, actually the worst device I have for palm rejection has to be my HP. It is absolutely horrid. I don't know if it's the digitizer, if it's, you know, what's going on, um, but the control, do I not have that programmed? Oh man, I haven't programmed this yet. Okay, so that really sucks. So I got to figure out where is my control. It doesn't have any of them. So we're going to do a really quick, I'm going to do a really quick programming of this and come back because uh, I don't want to work on this without having it programmed. So give me a second, I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. It took me a few minutes to program and I didn't want you guys to just sit there and pick your noses while I did that. So, um, yeah, what's great about the remote here with the dongle is I can have settings on this machine and just literally take the dongle out and I go and plug it into another machine that I program stuff on. So this is a really handy device if you don't want to mess around with the keyboard. It's cross-platform, um, so you can basically take it and plug it into your Mac, plug it into your PC, plug it into, you know, whatever you want to, and you can download the driver and have your quick keys. And what's really cool is it's got this little uh, scroll wheel and you know I can program it to do different things which is what I've done. So I can zoom in and out which I, I don't particularly like that version. I like varying the, the brush size. So, and then I've got it programmed to be the space bar. I've got a control button. If I want to save, um, you, know, uh, you know, control Z, uh, I can do that, which is really cool. So, anyway, so we're going to get into drawing. Um, this, of course, is Sketchbook Pro. I've got my little brush here um, that I'm working on. <clears throat> so, kudos to those, not kudos, but greetings to those who are enjoying um, a hefty dose of winter. I live in the mountains up here in North Georgia, the very, very north tip of Georgia. We're talking like maybe a couple miles from the border of North Carolina, and it gets pretty cold here. You know, I'm not going to say that it's like Russia cold or, you know, even Minnesota cold. Uh, you know, we don't get down below in the negatives. Occasionally, I'm sure uh, that that's happened here, but overall, we typically, you know, get down the 20s and the teens, and I think last year we got, gosh, we got down to the zero. I remember seeing zero, and I'm going... Yeah, that's cold. <laughs> that's cold. Coming from Florida, you guys got to understand, if if the mercury went below 50 degrees, guys, it was winter. You know, it was flat out winter. You know, you'd get your coat on. I, I had a leather jacket and my wife would always make fun of me. She's like, honey, you don't need a leather jacket. You don't need a leather jacket here in Florida. And I'm thinking, woman, it's not about the coldness. It's about the coolness. <laughs> Yeah, you know you like that. Anyway, so what am I doing this morning? I'm just having fun and showing you guys the possibilities of using Surface as a drawing device. Is it the best drawing device? No. I don't think that we really have one right now. I think iPad is pretty close to one of the best, but unfortunately, gosh, if it could only run I say if it could only run pro-level apps, it would do all the things and we would love it. We would support it and it would do the other things as well. Why doesn't it do the other things? Good grief. Um, yeah, so that being said, what am I drawing this morning? I'm just having fun, guys. That's all. That's all when you think about it, really. I'm just having some fun. Um, I'm going to start doing probably 10 minute art tips for you guys. I had somebody comment, they're like, dude, your videos are like, they're like an hour? I don't want an hour video. I want like five minutes. Can you give me like five minutes of teaching? And I'm like, yeah, I sure can. Um, <clears throat> because a lot of times some of these concepts, even though they're very complex, it just takes, you know, a little bit of uh, proper teaching to really understand um, you know, a very complex concept 
And if you do it visually, you know, us as artists, we tend to gravitate a little bit more towards that than if somebody were to just lecture it. You know, I, I'm not really a lecturer. I've kind of delved in to the whole lecturing thing because of the way that I have to teach. You know, you have to have uh, principle and concept and then you have application, you know. Um, just the way that, you know, I learn is by watching somebody else do. It's like, shut your mouth there, you know, jabber. Show me what you can do, you know. Jump through a hoop for me. Um, <laughs> it's kind of my mindset. So, you know, having to learn basically how to vocalize and teach something has really given me a different opportunity to help uh, those who want to learn uh, to draw. Um, so, anyway, uh, what, what is different about the Intrig technology? Why do I poo-poo Intrig? Um, so let's go ahead and file, save. Um, PC, this PC doesn't really crash. I've had more issues, believe it or not, with my Mac. Um, and this does have a virtual keyboard, so I, I click on the little virtual keyboard icon down here at the bottom. And of course nothing happens, which is awesome. Oh, there it is. Um, so we're going to go ahead, oh, we don't want to do that. So I've got my glove on, so let's do C-O-W-B-O-Y-F-U-N, Cowboy Fun, yeah! Um, and I've got my glove on, so you're not seeing any false positives. I had a lot of false positives yesterday because I didn't have my glove on. This glove was provided to me by the wonderful people over at XP Pen. <sighs> Actually, it wasn't. I bought it. I bought it as a standalone uh, item from Amazon. I think it cost me $6. A while back, I had purchased one from SmudgeGuard <clears throat> from a lovely lady who developed it um, and was selling them back in the day whenever nobody was selling them or including them. So she didn't have a patent on it, so she ended up you know, losing market share to some of the people and the companies uh, like Wacom uh, and XP Pen and Huion that basically include it with their, uh, you know, with their devices. Oops. Okay. I'm going to have a kind of a swagger. He's like, mm. Mm. who do you think you are? Um. Intrigue. Why is it poo-poo? Why do I poo-poo intrigue? I'm going to tell you why. Um, so we're going to zoom in real quick. So you can see it's got great pressure sensitivity. Look how light you can go. I'm barely pushing. Actually, I'm going to put the weight of the pin, and I'm not even pushing at all. Look, you can get incredibly light value. And a lot of people say that you know intrigue doesn't have the nuance of the Apple Pencil. And you know what I say? I say, you're wrong. You just don't know how to use the technology. What I want to say about it, though, is this. Let's, let's get this. Let's, uh, okay, let's do this one. So we'll do an extra layer here because I don't want to mess up my drawing. <clears throat> okay, a little bit. Okay, so here we go. We're going to make a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. Let's go uh, right about there. Okay, so first I'm going to draw a vertical line. Oh, look how beautifully straight that is. Look how we're not getting any wiggle at all. Oh, man, that's good. Let's go a little bit darker. Okay, so let's go here. Oh, man, that's good. Look how straight and beautiful. Beautiful line. I'm going slow. I can even go really slow, and it's still straight as an arrow. Then I go horizontal. Oh man, again, I'm getting nice, straight. I'm going to go really slow. I'm not getting any wiggle at all. It's, well, a little wiggle just because my hand's going up and down, but that's normal. So let's do it again and again. You know, I press the shift and it look, I mean, just beautiful. You can't get any straighter than that. You can't get any straighter than that, okay? Here's where the problem comes. Now I'm going to draw diagonally. Slowly. Slowly. See the wiggle? Right there. It goes one, two, three. So we're getting an issue there, an issue there, an issue there. So diagonally, 
Intrig, for some reason, I don't know if it's a digitizer, and you can say whatever you want to, um, and this is a very well recorded, I'm trying to find my ruler, oh there it is, a very well, a very well recorded flaw. So now, completely straight, boom, okay, so we're going to go, we're going to go slow. Yeah. Now you see it? It's bouncing. Literally bouncing. Isn't that fascinating? Don't you guys find that fascinating? Why they would have something that does that. Look, and it's consistent too. Bounce, 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 bounce. So, oh man. I thought I'd created a layer. That's no big deal. We'll just erase. We'll just erase. No biggie. We'll go a little bit smaller. So it does great horizontal, it does great vertical. But uh, whenever you go and you start messing around with the um, with the diagonal line, it freaks out. Now, do I think they could fix this? Well, honestly, no. I don't think they can fix it because I think it has to do with the points and the way the digitizer reacts with the pin. They don't have the points on the screen close enough. So you're getting you're getting uh, kind of an interpolation of how the computer is is reacting with the digitizer. And I think Apple Apple just has it down. Right? They just they just they got it down. That digitizer on that computer is wonderful. You're not getting any jump. I can go as, as quickly or as slow as I want to. But in this environment, what happens is the faster I go, the computer kind of makes up the difference. I'm, I'm not sure if that has to do with the computing power or if it has to do with the way things uh, were you know, programmed. Um, they've tried to make it better, but at the end of the day, it's just not. It's just not as good as some of the other technologies out there. You know, I was delightfully surprised with my new Dell. That computer, they use Wacom. They use Wacom technology in the Active Pen Stylus. They use, um, I don't know if it's the EM, it's not the EMR technology, it's something else because you have to put a battery in it. <clears throat> because Wacom obviously has a proprietary, uh, you know, they have a proprietary software that possibly Dell didn't want to pay the license fee for, who knows. Either way, they, uh, Dell, um, that particular machine uses uh, Wacom, I think it's A, some starts with an A. Either way, it's a great technology and it feels very similar to my, uh, to my Wacom pin um, on my main machine. So, <clears throat> where are we at in terms of time? Oh, we're good. Um, so, yeah, you can tell, I mean, just by messing around in this machine, whoops, let's get rid of the layers because I don't like putting my hand in that. Um, just by messing around with this machine, you can tell that it's, it's definitely got a mighty feel to it. And plus, whenever I draw, I draw pretty quickly. And I don't typically have, because you can draw, look, if I were to draw quickly, diagonally, look how straight that is. Right, so I don't have an issue with Intrig in terms of, um, you know, them kind of screwing my drawing up. Now, are there instances like in a vector environment that I would obviously need it to be a really straight line? Yeah, absolutely. But the reality is, is, you know, I use these dot devices primarily for, you know, sketch devices. Um, my, my HP, oops. My HP device is a mighty device, and what's really cool about it is it, it has complete Wacom technology. It's just like a Cintiq companion right there. You know, it, it downloads the same driver for the Cintiq uh, companion on a PC, um, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful machine. Does it have issues? Yeah, because it's a PC. We're, they're all going to have issues, guys. You know, even, I'm sure, Macintosh has dealt... Uh, you know, with issues, especially whenever they updated to Catalina. I had a couple issues that were just terrible. You know, Photoshop. Photoshop was completely unusable. I couldn't really use it. I had to use a version all the way back to 18. And even then, it stopped appending file extensions. 
what the heck, dude? You know, it stopped a, a pending a file extension. So I would go to save a file, and you know, I'd want to save like a PDF. And if I specified PDF down in the tab, it would no longer specify that I wanted a PDF. It's like, no, nah, we're not going to pay attention to what you're doing. We're just going to do our own thing. And I'm like, you suck. So finally, Photoshop got its head out of its booty. And now um, Photoshop is wonderful. Oh, my gosh. The most current iteration of Photoshop. Oh, I love it. It's so fast. It's so fast. It literally blows my socks off. I love it. I love the new iteration of Photoshop. I love the current version 2020. They had a little little hiccup with it crashing whenever you go to put a stroke on something, but they solved that pretty quick within a week. And then now, man, oh, it is just a wonderful, wonderful program that uh, just as long as they don't mess things up. Now, does it have issues concerning quick keys? Yeah, because they messed up the quick key structure. Thanks, Photoshop. But, you know what, whatever, they probably had to do it. Actually, you probably got some guy, some program, you know, guru. Actually, we're going to give him a 5 o'clock shadow. So let's enlarge. Again, using my remote. Look at that. And just a, such a nice, subtle, oh, wonderful, wonderful. And it's so fast and snappy. Oh, and it feels so good with this nice textured surface and this rubberized tip. You guys, I can't, I'm just, for those of you who are on the fence about buying a Surface product and want to go out and spend, or I want to go spend, you know, $1,200 on an iPad. Uh, you know what? Go for it. That's fine. The, the thing that you're going to deal with is the ecosystem. And Apple has a great ecosystem. Don't get me wrong. I've been in it since 1996. Um... You know, but you, what you're also going to deal with is the fact that the iPad is is a glorified iPhone. Is it getting better? Can you do pro level stuff? Yeah. Uh, you know, Procreate. Thanks to Procreate. Thank you, Procreate. Um, and they put Photoshop on. Let me put a little eye shine right here. They put Photoshop on there, but is it ready? Not really. It's getting there, but it's not quite there. Um, let's go back. Okay. And you notice I'm not going back to my keyboard because I've programmed my quick keys here, which is really cool. Let's darken this side up quite a bit. All right, let's go down here. Got a nice cast shadow right here, here. Okay, got that cast shadow right there. Nice and dark in here. Nice and dark in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink this really quick on time lapse so I don't have a, a 45 minute video. Actually, it'll probably be 45 minutes. I'm sorry. I just, I want to get this stuff out to you and sometimes it takes longer than five minutes. All right, bro, I want a five minute art video from you. Can you do something like five minutes? You know, can you dance for me, monkey? Dance for me, monkey. That's what I feel like sometimes whenever people do stuff like that. Uh, give me what I want because, you know, I'm me. Oops. Okay, so let's make that a little bit bigger. Anyway, the XP Pin remote cost about $35. You can get it from Amazon.com. I That is not a sponsor, obviously. Okay, so not a bad... Not a bad little doodad, so we're going to make this hair a little bit darker, hair a little bit darker here, right? Good. We're going to go a little bit darker. I've got a shadow that's cast by this. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys on time lapse really quick. We're going to do the inking process, and then we're going to put some color in this guy. Just for fun. We're going to put some color in here. It's for fun, you know. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We're going to have lots of fun. You know. It's going to be good. Okay. All right. So enjoy the ink process.
Okay, so in lieu of doing a bunch of ink work and going through that whole process, what I did is I just went ahead and blocked in some local color. Uh, local color, of course, is the color of uh, an object that doesn't have any light or dark on it. What you're seeing after I remove the sketch work is my local color. It's on a layer uh, underneath, and I've got my sketch layer that has some of my value um, placed on top. Now normally I would go in and just refine my sketch and maybe re-sketch it again, but just for today's uh, little demo on the Surface Book, I just wanted to show you guys the possibilities of what could definitely be there um, for you guys uh, in terms of being able to come up with a really decent uh, concept piece, you know, very quickly, and the, you know, the drawing um, the drawing aspect of the Surface Book is just absolutely wonderful. I really like it. Uh, I've said that before. I'm, you know, I don't, obviously I don't get paid for doing anything for Microsoft. You know, um, I just want to show, you know, the possibilities of alternative things, alternative devices, because most of the time, you know, we look at digital art as being something that, you know, the professionals do, or possibly you know, somebody that, uh, you know, maybe has a lot of money or along those lines. And I just want to let you guys know, I granted, you know, digital illustration, you have to have some type of device to facilitate the process. There are myriad of devices out there that can do that. It's got kind of a tube of a red nose. So we're going to select that color. We're going to make it a little bit warmer, a little bit pinker. Okay, let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's better. Um, and you don't have to go out and spend, you know, a bajillion dollars to be able to do digital illustration. Um, it just doesn't have to happen. What's really cool too about Sketch Pro is it's got a Copic library in here. If you're you're used to using Copic markers, which obviously, haha, I am. So there are certain uh, hues like uh, BV01 I'll typically use for, um, uh, yeah, here it is, right there, V01, um, for shadowing. So maybe I'll come up here and I'll add a layer and I'll put that on multiply. And what that'll do is it'll give me a nice purpley shadow, right? Maybe on this side. Okay, and I can just start literally playing around with this drawing and digitally painting this drawing if I so desire, um, and, you know, for you guys. Okay, so we're going to warm this up just a little bit, maybe over here. And I'm getting such nice value on him a little bit lighter. Right, we'll go a little bit lighter. And I'm still underneath. I still haven't started drawing on my sketch. This is kind of like my underpainting, right? I have different methodologies of how I do things depending on what environment I'm in. So this is obviously, you know, just a demo and I'm just doing a demo for you guys. So let's go back down here. We'll add a layer. We'll put that on top of my scarf. I'll put a little bit of highlight here. Um, actually, I need to erase that right there. There we go. So you guys get a better understanding of exactly what's possible uh, on the Surface, or on the Surface Book, on the Surface Pro. You know, and especially in Sketchbook Pro. Um, of course, I did see that recently they went to a pay model, which is pretty standard in this business these days. Um, for those of you who don't <laughs> know uh, the pay model that Adobe has, everybody's going to a subscription model, which, you know, I don't know. It just depends on your philosophy of what you think is right and wrong. Do I think it's right? It was free for a long time, and I understand they got to make money, so I'm not going to begrudge them that, but, you know, make the announcement. You know, we're going to a subscription model. Sorry, you guys. You know, it is what it is. So, 
anyway, I think that's all I'm going to do for you guys today. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going in and showing you, you know, all the minutiae of the illustration work here that I, I would probably end up doing. This is just a fun little drawing for you guys to show the capabilities of the Surface devices that uh, are part of our world now, right? There, there are so many, um, I'm going to make this dirt in the background. Yeah, I like that. Kind of like he's in the... Yeah, I like that. Here we go. You know, there's so many devices out there to choose from, and coming, you know, up into the holidays, you really have to look at that and, and say, gosh, what am I going to do? Which device do I want? I don't know. I just, you know, I want to be able to make the right decision. Um, I always tell my students, I'm like, dude, Everybody's going to have a different way they do things. Everybody's going to have, and that's kind of the cop out. You're like, well, I don't know what the best one is. You know, I'm going to tell you my opinion, but you're going to have to find that out for yourself. You know, why can't we just have one person that's like, the Apple iPad's the best thing in the world. Yeah, you know, the Surface is the best thing in the world. The thing is, is art is subjective, and and we work different. Everybody works different. You know, some people like. Uh, I, I'm a Wacom guy, and I'm a Mac guy, but. The fact that I haven't poo-pooed all of the other devices has really opened up a new world to me and at a reduced price point. You know, I don't want to have to spend $5,000 on a new computer every single time I go out and I buy, you know, I buy a new computer. Um, and that's the thing with Mac. You're going to be doing, you're going to be doing that. You know, go down to like 6% for this. A little bit more. Give him a little bit of ruffian. All right. I want this over here. I'm going to have a... Where's that? Okay, so we're going to go down, all the way down to really... Let's go up a little bit. Yeah, he's got that rim lining on the side. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for visiting the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Please do that. It helps uh, every little bit. I am trying to grow the channel here and there and everywhere as much as I can, how I can, where I can, and what I can do. Whatever, um, you know, whatever I can do to help out, um, you know, your average Joe uh, learn about this wonderful world of art is my main focus, right? Uh, I say that to my students. I'm like, if you guys need help, just call. Just not call. I don't ever want a phone call unless, of course, you know, you need you need specifics. Um, but most of the time, I can do. You can email me. You can tell me your issue. You know, I'll do a video for you. And that's kind of where my heart is. I want to make sure that you know they had the things that I really did not when I was in college. Um, and that's important to me. So, thank you guys. Hope you liked the drawing this morning. And we'll see you next time. Bye.